Well, today we arrive at a famous passage uh, in the New Testament, Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, reading it, you can imagine yourself walking through the halls of a prestigious university, staring up wide-eyed at the elaborately framed portraits of successful and famous alumni, right? Many of these Old Testament heroes are household names, are synonymous with acts of bravery and sacrifice. Noah, Abraham, Rahab, Gideon, David, Daniel. And whilst the author of Hebrews mentions in passing the heroic acts, he, he actually looks beyond the acts themselves to the underlying attribute that led to such heroism. The one thing they all have in common, faith. Faith, the author says in verse 1, is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. The two key words here are confidence and assurance. These words remind us that for Christians, faith is more than just wishful thinking or blind hope. It is a settled, rational belief in the existence of God and the veracity of his promises. Uh, as we've already discovered, the letter to the Hebrews was written to a group of Jewish converts uh, who were being, uh, they, they were Jews who had become Christians and they were being tempted to turn away from their faith and go back to their old ways because of opposition. Uh, the author of Hebrews uses the examples of faithfulness in chapter 11 to remind them uh, that faith overcomes all circumstances and, in fact, shines brightest when under pressure. Uh, and, and this is a word we need to hear today. Our faith reminds us that we have more to hope for than the fading promises of this world. We are looking forward to a promised hope and being confident of the glory to come. We will persevere. Verses 13 to 16 show us this. The author says, all these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has a city prepared for them. People of faith are not seduced by a quick fix or by easy answers. They have confidence of a better future, a promised future, and will joyfully live as strangers in a foreign country. In the halls of any prestigious university, the portraits call for us to gaze upon them. Their very placement above us, forcing us to look up to them as examples to follow. The list of names in Hebrews are different, though. The author calls us to look beyond them, beyond their deeds, to view them not as prototypes of successful graduates, but instead as an audience, looking down upon us, cheering us on as we fix our eyes on the only one who is worthy of our admiration. Hebrews 12, verses 1 to 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And isn't that what it means to live with faith? Fixing our eyes on what we know is true. Being energised to persevere with great confidence of our future home and salvation. Go in peace.